Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club and part 10 of the History of the Gyroplane series. In this film we look at developments in the 1980s. It was a decade that saw some quite interesting innovation but sadly towards the end of the decade the bad old days of accidents reappeared. In the UK with Campbell Gyroplanes closed the cricket design lived on with the sale of plans and the cell moulds to Dick Everett. Everett Gyroplanes was founded in 1984 and immediately caused controversy as original cricket designer Peter Lovegrove maintained that Campbell Gyroplanes hadn't been authorised to make the sale in the first place. The Everett cricket was initially powered by an 1800cc Volkswagen motor but then later powered by a Rotax two-stroke. Since the accident in 1970 Ken Wallace refused to sell his aircraft to the private individual and his aircraft had therefore become a personal test and development company with occasional adventure into sales efforts with various militaries. He formed a relationship with Vinton, a local company that made reconnaissance cameras and in the early 1980s the German military actually signed a contract for a hundred WA-122 aircraft but Vinton's modifications meant the aircraft was unable to fly so the contract was cancelled. Record breaking aside, Wallace gyroplanes faded from view and so too the potential from possibly the greatest gyroplane engineer of a generation. Benson in the US had really got himself distracted with odd projects from his B-16 with twin snowmobile motors to the coaxial copter. In the US there were two staple aircraft based on the B-8 one with traditional McCulloch power, the other with Rotax the Benson UK franchise had been taken over by a guy called Mike Langton, pilot of their aircraft previously, but his Langton Gyroplanes company closed when he was involved in a serious motorcycle accident and suffered brain damage. The Benson franchise was taken up then by Jim Montgomery, but he too was forced out of business, this time when Benson Aircraft Company closed its doors in 1987. Montgomery would continue with gyroplanes in later years, with his own design, the Merlin. Back in America, Martin Holman was the son of a prominent German scientist who came to America as part of Operation Paperclip. Holman made two very influential aircraft. First, the two-seat side-by-side HA-2M Sportster with a 150 horsepower Lycoming 0320 ground power unit engine to replace an earlier 130 horsepower Franklin Sport in recognition that to make an effective two-seater it needed to carry two people and decent amounts of fuel and the extra power improved that capability. He then built the world's first ultralight gyroplane in 1984, the Bumblebee, with a Kawasaki 440 two-stroke engine and 39 horsepower. Holman was very aware of safety and not only wrote about the subject, but anyone who purchased a Bumblebee kit got some training in his two-seat Sportster. Bill Parsons was a flying instructor who would travel the US giving gyroplane training seminars. He built his two-seat Benson B8M with a longer keel to become a two-seat trainer in 1985. It came in response to numerous accidents learning to fly single-seat gyrocopters. His original trainer was called the Super Mac, in reference to his twin carburetor modification to the McCulloch two-stroke motor, which gave 100 horsepower. Later, Parsons would become the distributor for the Italian-built Arrow engine in the US and Canada. Sadly, he was to lose his life in 1997 in a gyroplane accident. Another interesting aircraft from the US was the Vancraft Copter. Made by Charles and Jim Vanek, it was said to be able to be made in a hundred hours from their kit. It had an unusual two-seat tandem arrangement powered by a VW motor and at the time its rotor diameters of 28 feet were quite large and echoes of the design still continue today with the sport copter gyroplane. If there's one person in the history of gyroplanes that divides opinion, it's Air Command's Dennis Fetters. 
he launched the Air Command 447 Commander in reference to its Rotax motor into the kit built market in 1984. The Air Commander 447 was the first widely distributed ultralight kit and innovated with weight saving use of composite plastic. Fetters was also a very good marketeer and demand was immediately forthcoming for his kit as it was a truly complete but unassembled aircraft rather than a Benson type collection of parts to be finished and Fetters established a factory to meet the large number of resulting orders. An early fatality of an Air Command 447 led to Fetters building a two place trainer modifying the Air Command 447 by placing a side by side seat and installing a more powerful 65 horsepower Rotax 532. Air Command models became best sellers in the kit built market and Fetters was also savvy in building an upgrade ability so that the owner of an older model could retrofit newer engines and even a two place seat. The company and Fetters were riding high but it was not to last. If you enjoy these films don't forget to subscribe so that you get updates. In our next film we see how history repeats itself as a gyroplane gets attention for all the wrong reasons.